Yes, there are some wastelands in the list, uh, but it is hard to navigate through that car. We'll see if Noah can get the job done here. And if he wins, there's a decent chance that he's going to make the top eight here. The youngster going to his first Pro Tour next weekend, so that should be quite the experience for him. This would not be the first Open Series top eight that he has made, and we can't forget that he qualified for that Pro Tour in D.C. next weekend at Grand Prix, New Jersey, that 4,000-player event. Well, Noah went 13-2 and two there. So i got to say, very important part of tournament magic. You sit down against your opponent. You don't know what they're playing, but you got to size them up. you got to take your best guess. Okay. Gentleman with a very nice, crisp button-down shirt and a tie would not guess Infect. No, I, I would be wrong. Put, I wouldn't put him on Infect at all. I would guess some sort of Stoneforge Mystic Jace the Mind Sculptor strategy. I would put him on Maverick. Maverick? Okay. Yeah. In fact, we're looking more for, you know, hoodie with holes in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's step one of many. Yeah. A beanie. Play Matt with some death metal band on it. Mm -hmm. I would not have this read. Perhaps a deck with some meticulous operations to it. You know, like elves. I yeah, would guess so, elves. Sometimes you're just the mood to suit up. It's true. I've been there. I don't think I ever have been for a Magic tournament. No? I used to like to wear suits in Magic tournament. Sometimes you're just in the mood. Let's put it on. I got, I, I've gotten a little dressed up here and there, you know, like jeans and a nice polo, but never, Boy, I look, never suited up. Look at you go. Jeans I mean, and a nice polo. I mean, I'm ripped hoodie dude, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I mean, what are you going to do? You are, you are hoodie plus Boro shirt plus Adidas swooshy pants. Right. And my beloved hat, but I lost that on a flight, so I had to get a new one. Wait, what was the beloved hat? My black and white devil's hat. Oh, yeah. You lost that? I did. Jeez, that's tough. Yeah, so it was tough. I left a hat on a plane before, though. There's no going back. Yeah, and I, I, I have another hat, but it's, it's no good. I think you could probably call the airline to retrieve the hat, but I it did. seems they couldn't find just it. Just gone? Just yeah, stolen. It seems like it's just so much more work to go through. Sentimental value. I was really willing to put in the effort, but they couldn't flag it down. I left an iPad on a flight once. That's, just gone. That's way worse. Yeah, just really stupid. I deserved it, and I was resigned to my fate. I was just like, you know what? I don't deserve to have it back. What was I even doing? I'll tell you what I was doing. I was watching Fast and Furious 6. Then you do definitely do not deserve <laughs> to have it back. <laughs> you know, once I was in a mood where I watched Fast 5, because I was, you know, just in a mood, very rare, it took a surprisingly long time for it to get to any sort of action scene. There's a lot of dialogue. I was very disappointed. It's a slow build. Slow build. It's not all about action. There's storyline there. I'm not there. watching a Vin Diesel movie for the slow action, There's the slow build-up. There's some storyline there between the, those characters. The narrative, the arc. That's not what I'm there for. I, I want to see a sports car crash into an airplane in the middle of the ocean. That's <laughs> why I'm watching that movie. <laughs> I'd like to know what mood you were in that day. <laughs> where that's the only thing that could make you happy. Yeah, I just can't. You know, I saw it scroll <laughs> by, and I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'm pretty picky when it comes to the, the media I digest, and sometimes I feel like I just need to expand my horizons a little bit. Here's a death right shaman to start things off here for Noah. So the hand that Zachary kept there, it's a fine six card hand, but no infector. The first card that he drew was Inkbot Nexus, and now he's got a very explosive hand. Multiple invigorates. This is good. It has quick days there for Noah on the Noble Hierarch. It's going to take care of that, though. Well, given how mana efficient Infect is, if you don't daze there, you're probably not dazing for the rest of the game. Yeah. Let's see what Cohen's got here. It's another copy of Deathrite Shaman, and just a passing of the turn. No interest in attacking at this point here for Cohen. That's a Cookle draw card. Standard Premier IQ players, that is time in the round. Time in the round, standard Premier IQ players. End the current turn and begin the additional five turn extension. That is time in the round, standard Premier IQ players. Attack Team Probe Time. A beautiful modified Tarmogoyf, a murderous cut, a Force One, a Delver Secrets. Really valuable for Zachary to know about the murderous cut here, as usually these Sultai Delver decks do not have interaction for potentially one mana. So that's a very, very valuable piece of information.
Card coming. It's another copy of Hickball, Texas. A fine draw. Some backup. Probably, some... probably the best card in the matchup. Oh, it's, it is the best threat card. You know, uh, Soldai Delver's got a lot of answers to the other threats, but can't force a will this, can't abrupt decay it. Going will draw. It's a copy of Thoughtseize. It's a nice one to have. Looks like he's going to remove his delta. There's Tarmogoyf. Want to get a clock on the table. So the big Lurgoyf is here. Tarmogoyf Dial will be joining us in just a moment as it is a 3 4. Now here comes Deathrite Shaman into the red zone. But no more fuel in the graveyard for that card. And, and Zachary will not cooperate. You know, he's got another Nexus to play next turn anyway. Picked up a copy of Days for the turn. You got to remember, we haven't seen Infect for a while. Typically, when we see this, it's in the hands of Tom Ross, and really no one else plays it on the Open Series circuit. It's been a minute since we've seen Tom play the deck, but you have to remember, this deck can kill you out of nowhere very quickly. I mean, Zachary's got multiple copies of Invigorate right now, backed up by Force of Will, and the become immense that could get turned online, depending on how uh, Noah tries to interact here. And there's an Invigorate. Zachary being the nice guy that he is, allowing Noah to gain some life here. Let's see if Noah will have a response. He's going to cast a force for removing his Delver's secrets. Taking a look at his hand. He's got a force will and a daze over there, too. Daze is very potent right now. I think he's just doing the math here to see if he can, you know, float and then become immense. So this is a third card in the graveyard, invigorates a fourth card in the graveyard. The other invigorated hand now is a fifth card in the graveyard. Oh, there's another invigorate. There's a green mana available. And who to lally what a day. Well, he sure did make that look easy, didn't he? Zachary Cook going to win game number one here over Noah Cohen. In fact, up a game very quickly over Sultai Delver. And this is a tough matchup for Sultai Delver. It, well, it is when they have Inkbot Nexus. You know, for the rest of the stuff there, I think Noah can largely handle with, with his spot removal. But the Nexus is a unique threat. It's very tough to beat. Four copies of Wasteland, so that there's some game there, but... The spot removal that Noah's packing game one does not interact favorably against that card. Well, we're going to take a look here at Noah's sideboard. You've got that in front of you, so I'll let you begin. Two copies of Disfigure, three copies of Flusterstorm, a Null Rod, a Crozan Grip, a Thoughtseize, two Vendillion Clicks, a Liliana of the Veil, uh, two copies of Golgari Charm, and two copies of Gravedigger's Cage. Golgari Charm is pretty solid here, as cre the creatures that Zachary's packing are one toughness. Two copies of Disfigure for some more cheaper interaction. Three copies of Flusterstorm, Thoughtseize, and the Crozan Grip, though a little bit slow. Good answer to the Nexus. Noah's got to lower his curve a little bit. He can't be that clunky because Zachary's deck is asking him to have multiple pieces of cheap interaction in the same turn. So the Disfigures, the Flusterstorms, they're very helpful, and Golgari Charm has the potential to be extremely powerful. On the other side of things here for Cook, one Sylvan Library, a Graph Digger's Cage, a Bajuga Bog, a Caracas, a Crop Rotation, a Nature's Claim, a Seal of Primordium. We've got more one of, trust me, Crows and Grip, Flusterstorm, Force of Will, Submerge, Dispel, Divert, Pith and Needles, Teferi's Response. I like some of the counter spells here as they're pretty efficient, the Dispel and the Divert. Uh, the Teferi's Response here may come in. There is a little bit of play here, yeah. potentially. Uh, once you get past that, the Flusterstorm I think is fine. I think the crop rotation is okay. I like the one bajuka bog as Noah uses as a graveyard for some stuff. So there's a smattering of one-ups. The Sylvan Library is fine here too. If, no one's, if Noah's loading up on removal and slowing his deck down, uh, Zachary can potentially draw quite a few cards off of it. I respect the 15 singleton approach on the sideboard. He almost ran out of room. I counted the slots, there are 15. Yeah, just exactly That's enough. just good, good deckless printing. Yep. That's what that is, I like that. And a lot of these cards are, they're one-ofs, but they're redundant. Like yeah, Nature's Claim and Serial Parvorium, essentially the same card, but it's nice to have that versatility. The Counter Spell Suite, plus the Storm, plus Dispel, plus Divert, much the same story. Well, these players are going to shuffle up here and get ready for game number two. We will talk about the big announcement that we made last week. 
Grand Prix London being hosted by Star City Games August 14th through the 16th. Very excited about this tournament. Cedric and I have been working very hard on our fake British accents to bring you this event. Hello. We're going <laughs> <We're gonna> to have <laughs> more information for this event as we get past Grand Prix Miami, but this will be a standard Grand Prix in London hosted by Star City Games in the middle of August, and we are very excited about this. I think that was better than last week. I'm really coming along. Yeah, it's a slow and steady process. It really is. Hopefully we'll have it ready to go August 14th through the 16th, and Hopefully we'll see a lot of you guys there as well as we get ready for game number two here between Zachary Cook and Noah Cohen. You got a you got a British accent there you're ready to put on debut here? Nope. Okay, you're no fun. Nope. Good to know. I guess I'm the only one who embarrasses himself while doing this. Well, there's something uh, particularly bad about bad accents. So I'm going to wait until I can get it right or I'm not going to do it at all. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Taking the probably correct approach yeah i see we'll have to really practice on the podcast a little bit i'm envious because i love a british accent i do too as i said last week though if i had to choose between british or boston give me boston all day yeah i, I disagree strongly it's okay you'll come around part of it is just you know having a career in bro broadcasting you know a British accent just adds so much credibility to the affairs. It's why they, you know, anytime there's a big golf tournament, for example, golf is the type of sport where you want there to be a dignified air. Got to get a British person. It's true. Mandatory. Tennis. Tennis. Uh -huh. Same deal. Soccer. The World Cup. Yeah. Absolutely, big deal. absolutely, big deal. positively have to have a British person. To do it. Professional wrestling. Less, li less likely to be used there. Though still effective. I think it's quite good. I think it's quite good. A monster truck rally, for example. Rarely is there a British <laughs> broadcaster. Or, you know, a hot dog eating contest. <laughs> we, you don't typically have the British announcers in those kind of events. Because there's no need for an air of credibility to the proceedings. Because we're there to watch Truckzilla run over 20 cars or whatever the point is. I don't know if Truckzilla is actually a car, but if not, it should be. Found out that there is actually a, a truck named Truckzilla, so I guess I need to get into the monster truck naming sport and out of the magic booth. Cedric, you got anything to add? I do, yeah. <laughs> Game number two going to be underway here in just a second. Zachary going to take a mulligan. Unfortunately for him, luckily for me. Truckzilla is what you came up with. It's a good name. Truckzilla. Truckosaurus Rex, but Rex spelled W-R-E-C-K-S. Is that one taken? I can do this for days. You can just, you can just, you can move on from the booth and if you're ready. I know. And just go print some money elsewhere. Yeah, I know. It's Seriously. really impressive. I'm thinking about the same thing right now, gotta be honest. Much more well-rounded than I gave you credit for. <laughs> a man of many interests. They <laughs> really are. Oh, that's nice. Gravedigger is a monster truck. Probably a magic player. The problem is that you can name Gravedigger a lot of different things. It's not really unique to the monster truck platform. Let's see if Zachary can find a better six-card hand. Days among others. That's a brainstorm there too. Forest, he's just looking for an infector. Got an invigorate. Doesn't I don't think he has any infect creature in hand yet though. Kind of the same deal as the last hand. There's enough play here. He's already bulliganed, and a brainstorm helps him find something to do. So uh, a totally acceptable six card hand, even though there's no infector just yet. Noble Hierarch will be the first draw step. Misty Rainforest might be where Zachary begins things. Though Cohen started off with the Delver of Secrets. I imagine we will see a Daze from Noah here, just like we saw in Game Number 1 if he's got one at the ready. It was a quick Daze. I wonder if he regrets that Daze at all. It was very quick to take care of the Noble Hierarch. I'm not saying it was incorrect. It seemed like it would be perfectly fine. 
but his day is better served on something else in this matchup. I, I just think that the Infect deck runs on such little mana that once Noble Hierarch's in play, it's very hard to daze anything else. We saw last game, Zachary, Noah would not have been able to daze anything the turn that Zachary went for the kill. And he, Zachary would have been up a Noble Hierarch if, if Noah didn't daze, so it would have been even harder. And Delver does not flip, so we go to Cohen's second turn. Standard players, is anyone still trying to find their seat? Into the red zone comes the Delver. Cook will take one. Everybody else should be able to start. Standard players, you have 50 minutes for the round. You may begin. There's another underground C. And now here's a Thought Seize. And this is We're going to find out what Zach's working with. Super powerful in this matchup because uh, the Infect deck is so mana efficient that if you try to overwhelm and wait for one turn, ooh, we got a reader. One of Magic's all-time worst designs. We'll get this in a minute. It's a fair response. But if you try to keep, load up on Reaction and play in one turn, Infect is so mana efficient that uh, they can often overwhelm you. So you need to spread your interaction over several turns, and that's where the discard spells really come into play. Days Invigorate, Brainstorm Forest, and the aforementioned Teferi's response is what Noah was reading. And you said one of Magic's worst designs. All-time worst designs. I feel bad for Noah because he's reading it, and he clearly does not understand what the implications of this card is. Back when Rashad and Port was dominant in standard, this was printed as a response, much, much like Thundermile Hellkite to some extent, a response to Lingering Souls, except this is a million times more clunky. Counter target spell or ability an opponent controls that targets a land you control. If a permanent ability is countered this way, Rashad and Port, destroy that permanent, and you get to draw two cards. Super, super, super elegant design. Like something that, that came out of page 87 of the You Make the Card forums. Mm. That's what this is. What do you think the art request was? Show Teferi looking at a piece of land. Nailed it. Earlier times. Yeah. Uh, poor young Noah Koa. <laughs> probably <laughs> seen Scar for the first time. Literally does not understand the application. That's where you just take it. You just take it with the thoughts. He's, I don't know how this Spo works. Spoiler alert. Probably ends up leaving Teferi's response in the hand. And then loses the game because Teferi's response gets cast. Does not understand the implications of this at all. It's like if he had a five-card hand with one of the cards written in Martian. It's the same. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. That said, Brainstorm and Invigorate are probably the best two options here. Yep. I like the selection of Brainstorm. Now it's just going to leave up to Zachary's draw step here. So here's the, a Ponder from Noah. The flip side is he knows what Invigorate and Ponder do mm -hmm. and, and, and Brainstorm and such. So you can leave that card in the hand and take the Teferi's response and just end the mystery right there. Now, note one thing there. Ponder was cast directly into Daze. Noah was perfectly fine with it being dazed. Yes. Inkmont nexus the draw. That comes directly into play there. Take a look at the top card. No Delver flip. Misty Rainforest was the draw, but I believe perhaps Noah made that play to set up the Hibitoric that's in his hand. Perhaps. Take a look at the old hierarchy here. But now Teferi's response is online. There's a land that could be targeted potentially by permanence. That's true. <laughs> Just a silky smooth magic design. <laughs> Feathery soft. I'm just imagining the person who opened up that as their rare in the first booster they ever bought. Because that definitely happened. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? The answer, young Timmy, is wait for your opponent to target your land with Rashad and Port. Then you get him. Boom. Rashad and Port was such a good card back in the day. And oh, the answer yeah. was probably necessary. Not saying that's not the case, but there was probably a smoother design out there. That's all. Going to start here by attacking for one with his Delver of Secrets. Cook will take that damage. He's down to 17. Now does Cohen want to deploy a threat in Tarmogoyf or go after the hand with him? So those are the only two spells he has he's got. That's the only spells he's got, excuse me. You can also ask for another oracle reading of Teferi's response, which is probably where I would start the turn. That's option C. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm glad that Legacy is such a vast format that now we're at the point where Teferi's response has come back and shows up in games. It does make me quite happy. I always love the, uh, the oddballs in this format. Makes for a lot of fun. Looks like it's going to be a Tarmogoyf. I'm going to save that him for later. It's a little risky. Don't want to end the game with a him in your hand. At the same time, you do need to end the game quickly. Also true. And this Delver is not flipped yet. And it's unlikely Zachary can play his entire hand next turn, especially since one of those cards is Teferi's response, which can't be cast until Noah acts. Tropical Isle on the draw. That's going to come into play. Eight-point Nexus is going active into the red zone. And just an attack here for two, thanks to the Exalted Trigger. So two Infect. The Tom Ross token has been brought out. Let no one knows where he stands. Noah just wants as many, he wants as many Tom Rosses as he can have. So the die will not be necessary. Cone will draw. Delver finally flipped, and it's a good reveal there at Murderous Cut. Very good reveal. I'll draw the Murderous Cut. Tarmac going for 3-4 right now. Perhaps we'll see Cohen cast that him now. Can't take it with you. I mean, his hand is sort of what it is. There is him to Torak. Zachary's going to lose two cards at random. One of them could be the Teferi's response. So two cards are going to go away. Just two lands. So spells left are invigorating Teferi's response in hand. Mr. Rainforest will come into play. It's an attack here for six. As you mentioned, Cohen's got to get this game over with quick. Yes. Got a good clock going, but not a lot of protection. And Gataxian Pro a somewhat painful draw on the surface of it, but I don't think it really changes the clock. I think Zachary is dead in two turns regardless. Here's Gataxian Pro. Murder scrubs the card. Saw that with the reveal from Delver. Berserks the draw. And now knowing about Murderous Cut, I don't think you can make a play this turn. Makes it very tough. And all Cook can do is pass the turn back. Berserk invigorate to Ferris response in hand. Cohen will untap, take a draw step here. Murderous Cut, one of the cards that's really impressed me here in Salt Eye Delver this weekend. Super efficient. Quite the problem solver. Yes. And remember, you can always use Berserk on the other side of the table, too. You can also use Invigorate on defense. Mm -hmm. Those so, cards aren't just on, they don't just go on and infect creatures for the win. Yep. They do other things. Tom Ross has some legendary Berserk tales, up to and including killing an Elishnorn that attacked when he can't beat that card otherwise. Looks like Uncle Nexus may have some interest in doing some blocking. We'll see. Cohen's going to sacrifice his Misty Rainforest before blocks do occur. There's a Tropical Island. Perhaps we're going to see a defensive invigorate here. I think so. I think that's the block that at least Zachary's trying to set up here. So we'll see how Noah wants to make his move here. He's got the cut. Got another spell here as well. He's going to dump away a couple of cards here for Murderous Cut. If you 
would like to sign up for the modern This is the last chance for you to do so. Boom. The other card is a copy of Abrupt Decay. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you play a spell or ability targeting a land that I control? Mm. To Fair's response, I can't do that. cards. It's a huge deal. I yeah. mean, he couldn't get the, the response out of his hand last turn. Yep. Now he has another land drop. He has a big rate plus Berserk. I could just kill him this turn. And I think that Noah's last card in hand it's is... an abrupt decay. Good old Teferi's response. I think t Noah just needed to allow Zachary to block. Yeah, I think so. I think he definitely needed to Abrupt Decay the Hierarch as well, if Abrupt Decay was his last card. It's if possible, that's his last card, yeah. I, I may have seen it incorrectly, possibly Golgari Charm. That makes things a little different. Right. Then 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 Noah's in fine shape. Yes. But I believe it's Abrupt Decay as well. I mean, we're going to find out one way or another here in just a second. Yes. Because if Zachary would like to, he can go for the W. And if he's right, he wins this thing. Now, what he's trying to decide is, how do I use Wasteland in this situation? As that was his draw step for the turn. Do I even use Wasteland at all? Because the one thing he doesn't know is Cohen's last card. So he's going to play a Tropical Island. Activate the Nexus. Come into the red zone. Exalted Trigger. It's an Abrupt Decay before attackers are declared. And that's totally fine by Zachary, yep. I think. I can attack now. This is an Invigorate. That is a Berserk. And that one-two punch has gotten it done many times for Infect. And Zachary Cook is going to win this match here over Noah Cohen. Two games to zero. Infect takes care of Saltite Delver. You can see a little frustration there for Noah. Yeah, it's just...